Good morning, everyone. Today, the topic which we are going to discuss is from the subject Computer Organization and Architecture. The topic is Buses and the Bus Architecture. Students, in this session, we are going to learn about the architecture of the buses and what are the buses and what are their uses. Before proceeding, it is very important to understand that what are the outcomes of this session so that it can be easy for us to understand how we're supposed to move and what we're supposed to learn. Now, after learning about this session, you are going to understand that how the computer systems, they are organized, in what manner they do interact with each other and how the different components are going to communicate with each other. Are they communicating with each other just like us? No. So they're having different perspectives, different things which they're going to pursue to connect with each other. Now, what are those which we are going to learn in this session? Second, what is bus? Why do we require the buses? And what are the different types of buses do we have with their different, different functionalities? Third, you will going to understand that how to design and build your own systems. And at last, we are going to review about computer registers, that what is the usage of registers and how many types of registers are there in, in this architecture. The very first topic which we are going to start with, that is, why do we require a bus? See, before proceeding, I would like to quote one example here. Suppose if I wanted to add two numbers, for example, three plus two, I know the answer is five because my brain is processing this information that I need to add them. But somehow, if I talk about a computer, is it going to process in the same way? No. Now, how it's going to process, how it's going to communicate with each other, that we have to understand. And where the role of buses starts. A computer system which is made up of different components, for example, memory, ALU, and registers, now they have to communicate with each other for the fluent flow of the inf information or instructions so that the execution can happen. But will that be possible without any mediator? Of course not. Each component should have a communication with each other so that the proper execution can process take place. And the information flow can be taken place without any hurdle. For that reason, we really require the buses with us. Now, we can use any other topology also, why bus? But again, it's going to be very expensive if we are using to implement the mesh topology. As you can see, we are sharing the information among all the devices. It's going to be very expensive affair because it might be possible that because of the crush of the any, any of the devices, they are not going to communicate with each other. And it's very expensive also. So somehow we have to choose that particular a thing which is going to be versatile, low cost, and it's going to be effective for us. And that is the buses. So that's the reason we are going to use the buses for the communication part between these components. As you can see in this image, now what is this system bus? As you can see this, what is this system bus? System bus is nothing. In very simple words, if I say it's a communication, pathway. Students, it is very important to understand that if I wanted to make these components to communicate with each other so that the instructions can flow with ease and with the smooth functioning, so this system bus is required. It is nothing, it's a combination of wires which is having different different functions and they do their own roles. Somehow they communicate with these two, three components and then they can process the data whatever the desired output we require, as per the input, we are going to process that. Now, in what manner? What kind of system buses are there? How many types of buses are there? This we are going to learn in the upcoming slides. But now, this thing should be clear that what a system bus, system bus is nothing. It's just a communication pathway between the components so that they can have a communication with each other and the instructions the flow of instructions can be taken place with the ease and with very smooth functioning between these three components so that the delay process and the error, it can be minimized so that we can have the desired outputs which we are looking for. The third 
thing which is really important to understand that is the bus structure in the computer architecture. Now, as I've already told you that buses are considered as the communication pathways. Now, how they are going to communicate? What is their direction? In what manner they are going to communicate with each other, right? Then why this bus is known as shared transmission medium, this one. Why? This we are going to understand with the help of this diagram. Here you can see three things in these green lines. One is data line, second address line, third control line. Lines are nothing. Suppose if I'm talking about the system bus, system bus, I've already told you that there's a collection of wires. And these lines, these wires, which are going to tell us about the width of that bus. So it is a combination of three types of lines. And these lines are data line, control line, and the address line. These three lines are there, which actually comprised system bus. And bus is what? Bus is the communication pathway between the components. So data bus, data line, the first thing which we are going to learn about is what is the data line? What is the role of this line? First thing which we have to understand is it's going to transfer the data from one device to the other device. This is something which we have to understand. The data lines are used to transfer the data from one device to the another device. And that is the reason they are bi-directional. They move in both the directions. Right? The second is address line. So what is address line? As the name only suggesting, it is unidirectional and it is actually fetching the particular location of that data from the memory. And that is the reason it is single directional. That what kind of particular data is there? Now the third is control line. Control line, its work is to control only. What they have to control is, they need to control and see what the status, the status of the device. What kind of status? The status means that whether the system is ready to process, whether the system is ready to read, to write, to uh, to synchronize, that means clock check, the clock time. That means whatever the current status of that particular date device, the current status of that particular device where the instruction has to be executed, whether to check the readiness of that particular device, we are using the control lines. So as you can see, they are also bi-directional. So now we must understand this thing that there are three lines. One, which is bi-directional. Second, unidirectional. Third, again, bi-directional. And they are having different, different functions which they are performing. And as comprised, they are termed as system bus. And what is a system bus? System bus is nothing. It's a collection of wires. And somehow they are acting as a communication pathways between the major components of the computer so that the flow of the instructions and execution can take in place in a very easy manner. Now, this is a brief introduction about these three lines. Now, combined, it is known as system bus. Data bus is what? 
data bus is used to transport the data and instructions between the components and that's the reason they are bidirectional address bus it sends the address signals from the cpu to the main memory and this address signals contain specific address this is the keyword address locations from the main memory and that's the reason they are single directional the third is the control bus it sends the control signals between the components so that they can check their timings whether they are synchronized or not the control bus is bidirectional because it can take place in both the ways now the very important topic which is included in this particular topic that is the registers now what are registers first thing suppose why do we use registers so that we can note few things we can store the data or we can write the data in that manner so that we can use it in a in a future purpose right registers are doing that kind of a thing now registers are doing what it is acting as a computer memory like our registers are working as our memory right we write the notes in them so that we can memorize them whenever we are having our exams or for the revision purpose now in the same manner these registers are working as a computer memory now why so that it can be used quickly okay it can be used quickly for what to accept store transfer the data and instructions right now if something has been asked from the cpu to process who is going to work with them that is the register only now what register will do it will going to quickly going to accept it and then give that particular data to the control unit and the alu so that they can process it right now how they were, how they are going to process with the help of the registers and what are registers they are the computer memory so that whenever the any instructions has been delegated to the cpu so that it can be processed in a very quick manner without any delay so that's the reason we require the registers and they work collaboratively with the local buses so that the execution of the data the execution of the instructions can take in place in a very easy way now here we are going to learn about the types of data so types of registers in which the data is stored right that what kind of work is there now for example if i talk about pc pc stands for program count and it is of how many bits as you can see it is 0 to 11 it's going to be 12 bits similarly 0 to 11 again 12 bits and this is address register now here the third one 0 to 15 that is of 16 bits instruction register now the next is 0 to 15 again again it is of 16 bits temporary register it holds the temporary date the last is 0 to 7 0 to 7 same both of 8 bits and i r i n p r stands for input 
register and o u t r stands for output register they are going to store the output data right and it is again of 8 bits they both are of 8 bits the next is the data register it is of 16 bits and the last is accumulator that is again of 16 bits now one by one we are going to understand about these things now what the program counter do the program counter with its name is it having 12 bits it's going to do what it holds the address of the next instruction what is going to be processed it will take a check on whether what kind of instruction what is the next instruction which has to take place and from where the address of that particular instruction can be taken place so program counter is actually keeping a check on that now the next is ar ar register it contains of 12 bits only and which holds the address for the memory instructions right now the third is instruction register this one now what it does it holds the input character which is given by the user tr that is the temporary register it holds as i've already told it holds the temporary data and it is of 16 bits right input and output they are again using for the output characters and the input registers right now these are the certain registers which are in cpu these all registers we are able to find in cpu so that the processing of the data can be taken place so as you can see over here that these registers are going to collaborate with the buses and they are going to process the information for this session i have taken the references from these uh, links so you may refer if you wanted to they are the good links and thank you so much for listening me patiently and i hope the concept which i try to make you uh, understand you are clear about them thank you very much